we need to get through 2100 in gold. That sets gold into a, a, I don't want to say a rocket type stage, but it's certainly an acceleration stage. That will then spin right immediately into silver. It wouldn't be long before silver starts to partake. And once the metals themselves are going above those levels, those shares are going to go. Probably for silver, it's probably $30. It's probably a number that if we had a print and stayed there with a three in it, I think the shares can go real well. I still think gold's going to lead silver at this point in time, but there will come a point, and that'll be probably in the latter stage of the move, where silver can actually outperform gold for a period of time. Peter Grandich, founder of Peter Grandich & Company, holds a bullish outlook on gold, anticipating a surge that could push its price to $2,100. Following this, Grandich predicts a significant uptick in silver prices, potentially reaching $30 or beyond. Recent midday U.S. trading witnessed a dip in gold and silver prices, attributed to a better-than-expected U.S. economic report. Gold hit a five-week low due to a positive U.S. retail sales report, which tempered expectations of an imminent Federal Reserve interest rate decrease. Despite this setback, analysts at AWAG Funds project a 20% rally in gold prices in 2024, foreseeing a market value surpassing $2,400 per ounce. Grandich draws attention to gold's consistent outperformance against the stock market for nearly 25 years, a noteworthy fact often overlooked in financial discussions. The metal demonstrated its resilience by outperforming the S&P 500 stock index in 2023, driven by an October rally that brought prices close to $2,000. This trend follows 2021 and 2022, when gold outpaced stocks amid rising geopolitical uncertainty and global inflation. Looking at the 15 years from 2005 to 2020, gold's value surged by 330%, a feat paralleled by the Dow Jones Industrial Average, which only increased by 153% during the same period. While acknowledging challenges faced by precious metals mining companies, such as Agnico Eagle Mines in Franco, Nevada, due to production issues, political changes, and social unrest globally, Grandich sees these challenges contributing to a supply-demand gap ultimately benefiting the mining industry. Even with risks ranging from production disruptions to political instability, well-capitalized miners like Agnico Eagle Mines in Franco, Nevada, continue to identify attractive assets. Join us as we delve into insights shared by Peter Grandich. To stay updated with our latest uploads, subscribe to our channel and activate notifications. Thank you. I think we need to start there, and that is a nominal high. Really, to adjust for inflation, it's still a few hundred dollars higher from here. And, and I think that's an important uh, part for people that say that gold is fully priced. Listen, I have to set these parameters because I operate within them. They're not long, but it's very important. First of all, gold is treated like kryptonite by the financial service industry, at least in the U.S., maybe to a lesser extent in Canada, more financial advisors are tuned to having a part of a portfolio. But in the U.S., it might as well be kryptonite. Uh, the second thing that uh, to understand is it's probably the most uh, hated uh, investment by the latest fad in investing, and that's cryptocurrencies, or I call it Bitcoin, even though its real name is Bitcoin. Uh, it's a cult, and that cult believes that somehow if they destroy gold, it somehow benefits them, and they can't live in the same universe, whatever. Uh, but if you look at its actual performance, first of all, from two years ago, when I decided at the end of 2021 that I was not going to have exposure to general equities that weren't related to natural resources, to this right now, gold is still outperformed the stock market. But the biggest story, and this is just blows my mind, and, and if we asked 100 financial advisors, pick them anywhere in the U.S. right now and said, hey, listen, since the new millennium started, what has done better, the stock market or gold? 98 or 99 would say stock market, no questions out. When in fact, gold has outperformed even the stock market for almost 25 years. And yet you wouldn't know that based on the typical opinions about it. And of course, now those of us like me who used to say, and those that are still around from the days that I spoke can remember because they said it too. We used to say this saying, which is no longer true, Dressy. We used to say at a show, mining shares are just like owning gold. We learned last year that is not the case that there is a dramatic difference at times. And my portfolio can demonstrate that to you if you need to see proof. But the bottom line is, 
eventually the mining companies are going to be called upon to find these metals that the world claims we still need. And it's a totally different environment for them right now. Where they can go in the world is much different than 20 or 30 years ago. What happens once they're there, political changes, social unrest, uh, all, all sorts of things that make it really much tougher now to want to be an explorer and a miner in many parts of the world. But that's also going to play a role into the continuing supply uh, demand outstripping supply. So long winded answer, but I still think that uh, we are on just the cuff of this bull market. I don't think it's going to be rip roaring, but I do think that once gold gets a 2100 print and stays there for more than a day and not overnight over a Sunday, uh, I think momentum players and a whole, even the financial media will be kicking and screaming, having to comment on it. And that's going to change the makeup. And that's when the mining shares and, and the juniors and all are likely to have a much better day than they're currently having. Peter Grandich, founder of Peter Grandich & Company, foresees a significant upswing in silver prices, potentially reaching 30 or beyond. He views silver as a contrarian dream, emphasizing its attractiveness as a safer option than other investments, even if short-term gains are only apparent after a period. Despite an initial dip in silver prices during Wednesday's trading session, the market displayed resilience, signaling support around the $22.50 level. Grandich contends that physical metals, including silver, will likely maintain their outperformance until specific price levels are achieved. Analysts at AWAG funds predict a decline in the gold-to-silver ratio below 30 ratio 1. They set an initial goal for 2024 at 70 ratio 1. Should gold appreciate by 20%, closing the year at $2,475 and with a corresponding gold-to-silver ratio of 70 ratio 1, they estimate silver's closing value at $35, indicating a 48% return. Let's get back to the interview. Well, I would probably say it's probably the most contrarian opportunity since I watched it. And why I say that is for a lot of years, I too got the negative comments because I, especially when I spoke at the, at the shows around the world, the involving metals, because I used to say silver was really a second class citizen to gold and that it didn't have the same fundamentals that gold did. And of course, that irritated the, the silver bulls. But it has changed a lot for the better. There's a lot more fundamental needs for silver. It stories a lot better uh, than it was. The problem, as always, is retail investors particularly, they like quantity over quality. Give them the same amount of money. Uh, they, like, they would rather have 10,000 shares of a dollar stock than 1,000 shares of a $10 stock. Uh, and, and, and that's what the difference many times between gold and silver is. I personally think, as you just said, is it's a contrarian dream. I don't think there's any short term nirvana coming for it, but I do think relative to what other things people buy in the Bitcoins, the, the, the stock market in general, I would be much feeling safer and putting my head on the pillow tonight knowing I own silver than those things. And I think the two biggest opposing uh, powers to be is one is there's no question that the economies worldwide is not strong. China is not doing anywhere near that it used to be an important player in the commodities. The U.S., as you and I just discussed, is not as strong as they like it to believe. And therefore, you you would normally say, OK, caution to, you know, needs to be invoked when it comes to commodities because there's typical cycles and, and economic cycles. Then on the other hand is we have a real dramatic amount of shortages uh, if you believe even half the expectations of where economies are going over the next 5, 10, or 20 years, including a, a uniqueness of this electrification, which may be having a hiccup. It may not get there as fast and as far as people thought, but still going to play a major role. So there's kind of a, there's kind of a caught in between. I think we'll fall somewhere in the middle, Jesse. I think certain metals, uh, will do well. I think the metals themselves will continue to outperform the underlining shares because of the simple fact that uh, it, it is much difficult more now, in my opinion, for a junior resource company to operate than it was 20 or 30 years ago. So I think the physical metals will continue to outperform shares until such time certain levels are reached. And I know you want to talk about Pacific, but just throwing out gold needs to get through 2100. 
Copper needs to get back through 450. If those things happen, then those shares that, that are in that industry should all have a good time, most of them anyway, should rise most boats. Gold prices touched an all-time high of $2,135.39 per ounce in December 2023, mainly driven by a weak U.S. dollar and expectations the Fed will begin lowering rates. Across commodities for the second consecutive year, the only structural bullish call we hold is for gold and silver, said Natasha Kaneva, head of global commodity strategy at J.P. Morgan. With expected interest rate cuts and cooling inflation on the horizon, what is the gold price forecast for 2024 and beyond? Share your thoughts in the comments section. If the video resonates with you, join our community by subscribing to our channel and enabling notifications with the bell icon. Thank you for being a part of our community.